Hello, I'm Samuel Snow here uh, with world champion Roberto Jimenez uh, here at Alliance Jiu Jitsu in Keller. We uh, had the privilege of having him today to do a seminar and share some of his style with us and his concepts. Uh, his Jiu Jitsu is amazing, so we're really glad to have him here. The seminar was awesome. Um, Roberto, tell me a little bit about your style and your, your Jiu Jitsu. Thank you, Sam, for the opportunity, first of all. And uh, so my game is really open, actually. So I try not to do one single thing. I try to always be ready for whatever comes up. But I believe a lot in having a good basic foundation and connecting everything from there. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, you showed that a little bit today with some really awesome back takes. But good pressure, too, like pressuring the guy, making him react. Yeah. Uh, waiting for the right time. Uh, how did you how did you develop the style and, and where do you who do, who do you uh, attribute those so, skills to mostly? Right. So like for first of all, my, my dad, he's the one who had me train since I'm five, and even when I didn't want to train, he said you need to go train because eventually it's gonna one or the other. You're gonna get black belt and you achieve something, or you become really good and you can like live out of it. So there's no negative outcome, right. and. Definitely him, my friends in Vegas, uh, Mikey uh, Musumesi, Renato Canuto, and one of our me my mentors, like Lucas Lepri. He's helped me a lot, more in the mental side of like how to deal as an athlete, how to stay calm and be patient about things, and having a balance in life too. So tell us a little bit about your, your life outside of Jiu-Jitsu. Outside of Jiu-Jitsu, I, I don't really do much besides eat and maybe skate sometimes. But if I didn't do jujitsu as a, as a living now, uh, I'm gonna end up studying botany and nutrition, but that's what I would do if I was older and in a different life. Okay. Yeah, botany and nutrition. Interesting. What, what makes you wanna lean towards that field of interest? I believe that nutrition is like very important for athletes and people just in general. Because what you eat is your fuel. If you eat like crap or like stuff that isn't very good for you, you're going to feel bad and you're not going to want to do anything. Right. But if you eat good and you feel positive and good energy all the time, then you're always going to be active. But apart from that, it's also cool to know what you're eating. It makes you feel more at peace with what you're consuming. Right. If you don't know what you're exactly eating, it, you're always... Like, oh, maybe something can happen. Maybe I can catch something. That's how I feel. Right. So if I know exactly what I'm eating, I feel very at peace with everything. That ties in with balanced lifestyle and training and making sure that you're not getting sick, making sure you're prepared, you're fueled correctly for exactly. competition and, and you're healthy and ready to go, right? Yeah. Um, awesome, man. So uh, how's Vegas? You're out in Vegas now. How, what's the difference between Vegas and Texas? Vegas and is really like cool. It? I like it a lot. It's just very dry. Which makes the training hard. Every training, it feels like you're dying, but you're not like exhausted from, from uh, the humidity. There's no humidity. Right. It's just really dry. And in Texas, it's really humid, sweaty, muggy. But I like that too. It reminds me of uh, Guayaquil. Yeah. Yeah. Guayaquil, so you're from Ecuador, right? So I was born in Miami. Then I lived in Ecuador from like baby, one year old until nine, 10 years old almost. And then Texas until that age, until 17, and then now Vegas. Tell us a little bit about your, your mindset, your camp leading up to the Worlds. Did you, were you really confident that you could win? What, what was, where were you at in, in life in that mindset? Uh, I, I finally felt good and balanced with training, uh, teaching at my parents' academy, having friends in Vegas as well. So everything was coming together. So the camp felt very good. It was like a... Not a vacation, but it was time off for me just to train and just do that. Just focus on one thing uh, uh, for this month. Nice. And it was fun. It, it helped me a lot mentally to find what I want to do. And it sets something straight for me. Like, okay, th this is right. This is wrong. Yeah. You're doing this okay. You can do this better. And uh, this, this world, I, I came in like very, very mentally strong. Maybe awesome. not so crazy physically strong. I felt strong, but I can get stronger. What yeah. weight division did you do? Heavy. Okay. I weighed in like 198 with the gi, I think. So. Have I've, you been competing at that pretty rec pretty regularly? This is my thing. first time ever competing heavy, actually. Oh wow. I've been competing medium heavy this year. Okay. 
and w middle weight one time, and I felt horrible. So how'd your matches go? Like, give us a play-by-play -play in those. It was good. I, I submitted 10 out of 10 matches, and uh, that's the best outcome I could hope for. But I still saw some of my mistakes, and I'm excited for brown belt. I, I think right now nice. that the little period of time between worlds and brown belt is where I'm fixing those little mistakes that I made. Great. And hopefully one day I can do like Lucas, like have a world title, no score, uh, no score uh, points scored on me, and uh, maybe one day submit everybody. That would be that's a good goal. I was that's, gonna ask you what yeah. are some of your so what are some of your competitive goals besides IBJF or besides world championships? Do you have some big things on the on you know on the horizon for you? Yeah. So a lot of people hope just to get these titles. I don't think the titles really matter. I think it would be cooler to find out how you got that title. What's the story behind that title? That's what's cool, not really the medal. So if you win every match by two points or one advantage, what's cool about that? That's not very cool. Right. Or that's not very interesting either. If you win every match by submission or every match you didn't get scored on or you did something crazy in every single match, that's like a story. That's something that I want to be able to say one day to my children or to somebody who would ask me about it. Nice. So every time I go for a tournament, I, I go for the mentality of be undefeated. And it's not always possible, but if it is, then you try your hardest to do it. I'm a firm believer in the submission is the king in jiu-jitsu. It's the mm -hmm. ultimate goal, right? So how do you prepare to make sure that that's the outcome or that outcome is more guaranteed when you're going to the competition? So in in training, I try not to finish people too much. I try to find the the back always. That's my favorite position. But if I get the position, I try to find the submission and let go of it and find the connection to that, to another submission or a better position. So kind of uh, studying my game. I study my game that way I can understand if I'm in this position, I can get out by doing this. Or if I'm in this position, instead of getting out, Maybe this is a mission instead. I can finish the fight, you know? Right. That's why I don't worry too much about the points. Because only if there's one minute left or, or like you're really behind and For sure. there's a, not very much time left. But even if there's three minutes left, that's enough time for you to try something and then recover the points. It's always uh, having to pay attention to everything. Do you have any advice for someone who's thinking about starting Jiu-Jitsu? maybe thinking about they've been seeing their friends go to classes or they've been seeing someone they know do jiu-jitsu and say how much they like it but maybe they're afraid maybe they don't think that they're going to fit in at the gym maybe do you have any advice to those kind of people for sure i think that um you have to just enjoy jiu-jitsu at first or if you're not enjoying it so much just push yourself it's it's something that you really don't understand what you're doing until you get to a certain level because even, even me, not, I'm just now understanding what I'm doing. Like, I'm v visualizing everything very differently. I'm understanding what I'm stepping here for. I'm understanding why I'm gripping this is not uh, one-dimensional or two-dimensional. It's 4D. Four, four, four I'm ahead of everything. So I try to, and, and that's now. Imagine seven years from now or 10 years from now. I, I, want, I want to one day be like, the. And not have to think about what I do and just dominate everybody. So for that, you need to not know anything and have to go through the struggle. And I think that's very fun. So if you right. just keep the going. The struggle is a big part of the story and the journey, right? Yeah. It's a very, you know, for a lot of people, it's a very uncomfortable thing in the beginning. It's very, uh, but it, feel very they feel very lost. But yeah. then those, those are the reason why the rewards are so, so good, right? Exactly. So sweet. So I think you just don't give up. Just keep going and have fun. Have as much fun as you can because it's going to pay off. Today you were teaching the guys and, and the kids and everyone here at the seminar. You were, you were using the word flow a lot. You have to mm -hmm. feel a flow and the movement has the flow. You can't be so choppy. And, yeah. And you got to you know, find the way to make it smooth, right? Mm -hmm. So that, that goes uh, two ways, though. For tournaments, obviously, you're going to be aggressive. But in the in the training, you want to be as calm as possible, I think, whenever it's not competition season or anything, to understand, like, everything you're doing. 
not not kind of uh, I like pohada every day, but not every day. <laughs> Sometimes you need to understand what you're doing. And you can't do that all the time when you go hard. Right. That's why I try to like go submission sometimes. I let you understand, okay, I have the submission, but what if I just keep going? Yeah, because it's, it's not a, it's a laboratory, right? So it's not about winning. Um, how, is that how you improve and perfect is focusing in on one position while you're, while you're rolling or, or a couple of techniques that you want to you want to really like get in your toolbox you really want to sharpen or yeah or whatever you want to you want to add it into your game yeah so that, if i have a technique that i really want to try i i make sure i try that technique in grappling and then i move on to regular grappling or trying the, the next technique that i wanted to try so i'll have a handful of techniques that i i have in my head okay i need to do this in the training with this guy and then i can do something else with that guy but just because of the, the body types, you okay. know, you obviously cannot do everything with everyone. Right. If a big guy is, a, you're going to fight a really big guy, it's going to be your choice to, are you good at taking down big guys or are you better at bottom, playing guard, lapel guards, whatever. So just noticing everything, awesome. people's sizes, uh, their length, their uh, reach. It's just like MMA too, I think. You need so... To, what was the what would be the difference between do you train sometimes like oh, I want to I want to add these new techniques and I want to drill them while I roll and if they're not I'm, I'm assuming you would do that if they're not like super high level people you know where you need to really play your A game or sharpen your A game yeah so and it's like a have, ladder and then you have like another another side to the training where you're talking about flow and like getting into that state where you're not thinking you're taking what it, what's there and you're, you're looking for another change yeah. another submission another position that you can improve so it's you like just a, connect everything. Yeah, so it's like a stairs. You start with the small guys, the guys who you know you can do the technique with, and you try it out with them. Right. And you go with the guys who move around, but you can still dominate them. And you go with the guys who you, you have good battles with, good technique, but you can tap them at least once in the training. Then you go with the guys who you can't tap, but you guys are even. And then if you get it with that guy, the technique, then try it with the person who always beats you. And right. maybe you surprise them. And that's how you start your evolution, okay. I think. I've, I had one pass that I was getting on everybody, and it was working. And then I tried it with somebody else, and somebody else, and somebody else. And now I realized, wow, if I do this with every technique, then eventually everything's going to connect. And eventually everything's going to be at that level. Nice. So, yeah, that's where I learned with Lucas, patience. Awesome. You just, once you find something, you just need to go with it and be patient for the result. Um, have you ever thought about quitting Jiu-Jitsu? I have. Last year, actually. I didn't want to train as much because I felt like I was just stuck. Uh, my game was the same, and I couldn't see past what I was doing. So I was uh, like a horse. No, no, the, um, the race horses, they have uh, blinds. They can't see outside of their peripheral vision. They can't see the peripheral vision. Right. I felt like that. I felt like I was just going straight and in a bad way. I couldn't see around me what I was doing with the technique. So when I went to Lucas's for, for a couple of times this year, and then I met to, uh, Mikey and Renato, and this year it just evolved very well for me. The, the blinds kept coming off little by little until finally I'm seeing everything in a different way. Nice. And that's helping me in life too feel positive yeah. so everything everything uh, affects your life I think so if something's happening that's negative it's gonna affect everything else and I fix some things that were negative in my life and yeah. everything else evened out so yeah. you attribute that maybe that burnout or that that fatigue or that lack of lackluster not not so excited about jiu-jitsu anymore to like a mindset maybe your thoughts weren't in the right space, or you yes. had some negative energy in your, in your life. Exactly. About the World Championships, so you ended up winning weight in absolute, right? Mm -hmm. How did that feel? How did it finally feel to finally win or accomplish that goal? So that's like literally a dream I've had when I was younger. Like I would say when I was younger, when I started like in Jiu Jitsu, I would say one day I'm gonna be a weight in absolute world champion, submitting every fight. Awesome. And to actually do what I said as a child or as a teenager to actually accomplish something like that is 
it's undescribable. It, it's it's cool the fact that I accomplished it, and also didn't feel any different. That's what I was hoping as a kid as well, just to be yeah. able to make this goal happen, and not feel different about who I am or how I see people. That I feel like a lot of people have that fear sometimes of accomplishing something big and yeah. becoming very ego egoistic or uh, self-centered just because they want to keep going that way or yeah. keep that momentum going of winning and stuff. Uh, I, I think that you breaks don't want it. it. You didn't want to change who you were on the inside like, yes. as a person. Yeah. And I think that breaks the momentum, trying to change. Because like, well, like water, if the water is streaming and with that stream you got to where you are now, why would you want to change just a little bit to maybe go on a, on a higher level, right? Right. What if you're already in the right path? You just need to keep going nice. and be patient. Yeah. Yeah. So, keep believing exactly. in yourself. So it's good. Uh, happiness is what I felt. That's pure happiness for me. Awesome, man. Winning the tournament. So what does Jiu-Jitsu mean to you, like overall? It means finding out how life works. I know that's really deep, but that's what I figured out for me. That's something you've gotten from Jiu Jitsu as well. Yes, yeah, I've figured out great. how how to. Uh, because whenever I look at Jiu Jitsu, I don't just see the the competition side. I see the fact that you need to eat well to feel good in Jiu Jitsu. You need to have a good mentality. If not, you're gonna be very sluggish and very uh, slow in training, and uh, everything just affects who you are. So when you get, when you understand that in jiu-jitsu, I think you can understand that in, in life, you right. know, like how to deal with your job, how to deal with uh, dieting, how to deal with stress in life, whatever you do to like fix your game with jiu-jitsu, wh why don't you apply those logics to life as well? If this is bothering you, take it out of your life. Yeah. You know what I mean? And if it's, if you feel like something's missing, Go out of your way and look for it. If I, for me, I didn't know how to pass lasso guard and lapel guard this year. Yeah. I, I, I couldn't find out how. So I had to go out and look for it. And I had to play that game. You have to give a little extra effort. You give a little extra, go, you go get a little looking, extra. Go looking in the right, you know, figure out how to solve that problem, right? Yes. Yeah, I think for me, man, it's discipline and, and patience. Like, Jesus has taught a lot. Mm -hmm. So, and with that discipline, like you're saying, you can... You can keep a constant enough direction in your life to be able to to maintain some momentum and also like you know evaluate your mindset, your thoughts, evaluate your life overall. Like you're saying, what makes me happy, what doesn't? Yeah. Because you have that balance, because you have that discipline on a daily basis to control your thoughts, your emotions, all sorts of stuff. Exactly. Awesome. For for me, the, an example of that would be uh, juvenile. I was doing really really well, like competing everything adult juvenile and when i could compete adult and winning everything you know but then I, I feel like i lost that momentum like i said the i tried to go at a different level and i didn't fl follow my flow instead of trying to follow somebody else's right and that broke my momentum and then uh, this year i think i found was that some of the tournaments you had trouble with? I think it was like Europeans that you, yes. you had trouble with? I had a different, kind of a slightly different mentality. I okay. felt like, okay, juvenile, I want everything. It's going to be the same as adult. Yeah. And I felt like I got a little, um, not slack. Overconfident? Not overconfident either. Just, uh, I felt like the, the guys who always win. And I, I felt humbled this year. That's good. Yeah. Couple, the couple losses I had, I learned, I, instead of getting hung up on them, on Europeans, I felt like that, hung up. Yeah. But after that, I felt like I could only learn from it, you know? If, yeah. it, if I got hung up, and I didn't learn any from Europeans. But then I went back, and I, and I looked at my fights, and I realized, okay, I could fix this, I could fix that. Yeah. It's, not, it's not a loss. It's a loss, obviously, but it's actually good for you. It's what you, you can, needed. Exactly. Yeah. You can see exactly what you're, you need to fix. Yeah. You Just know? like a lot of things that are painful in life. It's like those are things yeah. you need. You need those as lessons. You need to learn from them. If you keep having trouble with your boss about this one thing, okay, to just stop stressing about the thing that you keep doing and take a minute, breathe. What yeah. is it that's happening? 
you know yeah. maybe even have a minute and talk to your boss yeah. you know that's what i had to do as well talk to people that i i felt like i didn't have trouble with but my troubles revolved around them and that's not good for me or them awesome man yeah that's one thing it's it's so hard you can tell i tell my students all the time is like you can you can win and feel great or you can lose and improve um and it's it's easy to say you know losing you should learn you know you should mm -hmm. try to learn and not stay angry and stay frustrated uh people have a hard time with that i do too i don't like to lose but that's something that's really really crucial right to get to get to where you need to be to where you can start to win right yeah if um, you think about it who's who's uh the guy who's been dominating the black belt absolute for the past four years Bushesha. yeah but Bushesha's lost a couple of times as well right. and he even says it when you lose you just have to go up there in the podium and smile because yeah. you lost. You have to understand that and you can fix it now. This is a great, uh, great point I want to make to you guys out there that are watching this interview, um, to parents especially. So all the sports are, are really the, one of the biggest purposes sports play, the biggest roles they play for kids is to teach them that those life lessons. So how to lose gracefully, how to lose where people you're a good sport because that they're going to lose a lot in life. And if they blow up, if they freak out, it's not going to be good for them. They're not going to understand how to use that loss, to use those bad feelings to motivate them to improve and be better. Um, so jujitsu is great for that for kids, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you teach a lot of kids in Vegas. You teach yes. a lot of classes at Alliance Las Vegas. So what do you see for, for kids? What is that? How do those benefits help them? How do they learn that on the mat? They, they, they definitely have a, a step ahead of people in life just because they have to understand how to lose. And th that goes in, for example, a businessman. What if he loses a jo his job or he loses a, a, a business trip or a big client? A big client. client. Yeah. That's like losing a tournament, a yeah. big tournament. You lost. Now you have to go find another tournament to win. Right. Do you have to go find another big client? Yeah. So I feel like kids need to understand how to lose how to how to respond well to wins as well because you can't if you get a lot of a lot of a lot of money from a paycheck 10,000 right. and you waste 5,000 for a party in Vegas you only have 5,000 left in like one week and yeah. you made 1,000 10,000 one week ago right it's the same as you win the tournament and the month that you took to win that tournament you take two weeks off and then eat bad go party you're back to zero you have to take another month to get back to where you were before that tournament. To be able to win again. Rather than taking two months, and now you're two levels ahead before the tournament. Does that make sense? Right. So when I try to teach the kids as calmly and like as fun as I can. Because I remember when I was younger, I didn't like it. Everybody was like very serious, very uh, strict, and I didn't like it. I think there's a good balance between strict and uh, fun. Right. Discipline and communication definitely yeah. kids the kids need to have fun they need that that time where they look forward to coming because then they yeah. put some in the mindset the right mindset positive and ready to learn the quicker you get For that sure. feeling of jo joy and happiness to enter the mat the better the quicker you start learning like the real jiu-jitsu nice yeah we've really enjoyed having roberto jimenez here at alliance jiu-jitsu and keller um alliance is represented all over the world by 200 plus affiliates. So if you guys are near in the Lions gym, be sure to drop in. We're represented by amazing athletes and instructors. Uh, if you guys are out in Vegas, make sure check out Roberto's gym, uh, Gacho uh, and Gabby, his parents. So amazing facility over there. I've, I've had the pleasure to go and, uh, and see it myself. Anytime anybody's in Vegas, we are open doors to any team. It doesn't have to be Alliance, but come join the family if you can. We love to help our students as much as we can. If you're into competitions, we go into competitions, help you out. I'm sure Sam has the same mentality. We all try to help our students as best we can. Jiu-Jitsu is, is bigger than just the, the sport and just the practice. We're 100% we're devoted to our students and improving their lives on and off the mat. I know Roberto's the same way. Uh, amazing guy, great energy always when I'm around him. I uh, love the enthusiasm for jiu-jitsu. He's charismatic. It's contagious. So 
you guys be sure to check, check him out in Vegas. You guys come try a class here at Alliance and Keller. Uh, you're more than welcome, free, a free class for everybody. So we look forward to seeing you guys here. Of course, join the family. Of